Good afternoon. This is going to be a politics 101 discussion on the five things you don't want to do first in a campaign. Like and subscribe or hate and comment or hey, if there's other things you don't want to be first at, do that in the comment section below. Now, these are five things and I'll try to do this in five minutes, but I don't know if I'll succeed. You don't want to be the first person to do. The first one is, and this is especially important, not just for people who have never ran for office, but these are also for very low level offices running for higher up seats. Never be the first one to announce you're running unless you are the big dog with a ton of money. The uh, history of politics is littered with candidates who come out, I'm the guy, I'm gonna make this big announcement. They do it too early, they get a target on their back, and all it does is encourage somebody who's much bigger to go in there and spot you like a bug, or you get crushed because you're the only person out there that they can target. Now, if you're Jeb Bush and you're running for, say, governor of the state of Florida, which couldn't happen, uh, but if you were to do that again, somehow, you changed the rules and you wanted to run again, um, yeah, you could go first. But if you are, you know, anybody else, just don't. The guy who announces first is the first loser. On that, you also don't want to be the first person to endorse a candidate who isn't the likely choice. Now, let's go back to the great year of 2016. And I put that in. Yep. Now, if you came out there and you supported Jeb Bush, hey, and you lost, he was the consensus candidate. Same thing with Scott Walker for certain parts of this country. If you came out there for Marco Rubio, yeah, your career is kind of ugh, because, well, your guy didn't win. You weren't the establishment guy. So you're kind of a weirdo. Are you some sort of like, you know, are you some sort of Florida nut? But let's say you did pick Donald Trump and you were the first. Yeah, you tend to get forgotten because remember all those establishment people? You know, the, uh, not talk about the never Trumpers who were never Republicans who just wanted a party to be in, but ultimately the people who stick around and, and end up supporting and working for candidates. Yeah, they forget the guys who go first. Unless they're like central to the party, you know, apparatus for this guy to get a, or this woman to get a, a nomination. Um, and they're going to be there after you're gone, especially if you don't win the election. Um, but you get forgotten for going first. And if you are one of those big dogs, unless you're like a supreme big dog, like his kids, look at what happened to Jeff Sessions and Chris Christie, first senator and first defeated candidate to come out there for Donald Trump. Or just back it up to 2008. What happened to John Kerry? Well, John Kerry didn't get a lot of love from Barack Obama for four years. Hillary Clinton was the first Secretary of State, not John Kerry. I mean, Biden didn't really support him even after he lost the nomination until like a week before he got the VP spot. So being an early supporter doesn't necessarily give you anything. On that same spot, let's say you've got like 10 candidates that are going to be on a stage. You never want to go first, ever in the speech. First off, because politics usually don't start on time, especially in South Florida, because we just don't. Okay, and it's not a black thing or a Caribbean thing or a, or a Cuban thing. You can have an event with 50 white guys from New York. You say it starts at 7, it ain't starting at 7. <laughs> or if it physically starts at 7, it ain't, you know, like there's going to be like four people there until like 7.30. It's just a South Florida thing. But there are plenty of areas that are like that. You have a big speech and you go first, you're not remembered unless something bad happens. Okay? Unless like the, you know, the clan or a fight or somebody says, you know, I'm a socialist. And then you're remembered because they're going to go through the B-roll the presses and they're going to go through whoever's there and guess what you're probably at the beginning of all of their taping so yeah there's gonna be a clip of you and then the candidate and uh, yeah that's that's not good also the people that are there probably don't remember you one because most of them again didn't show up right um and you're gonna to want to make your speech shorter right because when you don't have a big of a crowd you don't want to be long and drawn and your people like my videos. So yeah, you're probably going to sort of speech, probably not going to come up with things that are really cool. Um, but the money people don't remember you either. Because again, you're not closest to the candidate. Tale of two elections. 2004, Barack Obama 
is very late in the program, does a wonderful speech, gets kicked off in the national politics um, because of that speech at the 2004 Democratic National Convention. 12 years before that, another African-American senatorial candidate from the state of Illinois gives a speech, Carol Mosley Braun, probably not very early, or it's going to be not very late in the program, didn't get the same sort of gusto. And, uh, you know, the first African-American female senator ever, you think would have a easier time, but not only did she not win an election in 1998, she was sort of an afterthought when she was named an ambassador and just didn't do much in 2000. Not that she would have won the 2000 nominee, but you never heard of discussions for GP or anything. So later is better. Now, converse of that, you never want to be the first person after the big dog. Now, sometimes when you see speeches, especially if you are in a smaller venue, you might have, let's say, like a young Republican organization or like a gay rights group. Maybe you have like 200 people there. And so kind of a big event for these guys. And usually the they sort of flip themselves. So the, the biggest name usually doesn't go last because they want to fundraise and get all the news press and they want the news press to be there. So they go first. You don't want to be the person to go second. So you don't want to be the first one after them. Um, all the energy gets sucked out of the room with that guy or a woman who's making that speech. The press kind of wants to leave. A lot of the supporters are only there for that person. So you kind of get forgotten. You've got people that are leaving. It's a weird vibe. The person after you the crowd's probably not going to change much because if they stayed to see you, they're going to stay to see the person who's lost. That's good for volunteers. That's good for money people. So it's good to go after. It can be good. I mean, you're not also just not getting the people that are just there to see, you know, the big candidate. So, but if you're the one who goes right after him, eesh, that's not so good. Don't want to be that guy. Last and not least, don't be the person to ever suggest getting rid of an, of an elected official, your party or other party. Kristen Gillibrand. In my opinion, as a Republican, Donald Trump's worst fear is a Kristen Gillibrand being the nominee for president of the Democratic Party. Young, unlike Hillary Clinton, from New York, actually from New York State, unlike Hillary Clinton, uh, has kids, unlike Hillary Clinton. Yes, she has Chelsea and the, their grandkids, but. They're not young kids. Actually has a history of being conservative on certain issues. That all got derailed the minute that she went after um, Senator Franken. And yes, Franken resigned. And yes, the evidence was as clear as day that he was feeling up a woman on a military plane for a USO event. That woman got attacked by the press and, and the media, and so was Christian Kirlbrand. In fact, there were articles this week in Politico and others about how Democratic donors don't want to give her a cent and how they really want Al Franken back in office. And this happens on the Republican side too. Don't get me wrong. But Democrats happens a lot more often. They eat their young, look at their leadership. It's like 292 years old, or two, like some 242 years old, the top three Democrats in the, in the, in the House. They're almost as old as the Republic, okay? The youngest member is in her late 70s. Democrats don't have a minor league, and part of it is because, hey, all of those Democrats who have made challenges, look, I'm not a big fan of uh, Miss Ascensia, okay? But, you know, when she picks on the leadership, when she picks on the Democrats who've been there forever and, hey, they're only there because Donnie Jingles is a moron as president. That's why they're getting back in the leadership. Guess what? She isn't going anywhere either. Because Democrats don't want to attack other Democrats, or at least don't want to be the first one. And it's no different with Republicans. John Kasich wants to run for president. He's not going to run for president unless Jeff Flake announces first. And there's no chance that Jeff Flake becomes president of the United States or even announces at this point. So it's not going to be a Republican challenger unless John Kasich is willing to just lose and lose for the party, which he might. But anyways, these are five things you don't want to be the first of. And But you can be the first one to like and subscribe to my videos. Thanks.